For centuries, Europe tamed its rivers with an extensive network of over 150,000 dams. These structures, some dating back to the early 20th century, symbolized progress and power. Thousands of large dams were built, along with countless smaller weirs and barriers. They generated electricity, controlled flooding, and fueled industrial growth. However, this came at a hidden cost. Dams disrupt the natural rhythms of rivers, damaging ecosystems and threatening the survival of migratory fish. Many of these structures are now reaching the end of their lifespan, becoming costly hazards. Across Europe, a quiet revolution is underway. Dams are being dismantled, opening up waterways for the first time in generations. The recent removal of three dams on Finland's Hitolanjoki River offers a glimpse of this transformation. But dismantling these colossal structures is a complex engineering challenge, fraught with risks. So how exactly do engineers take down these concrete giants? Finland's Hitolanjoki River, a 53-kilometer waterway flowing into the vast expanse of Lake Ladoga, holds a unique ecological treasure, the country's last surviving population of naturally landlocked salmon. However, for over a century, this precious ecosystem faced severe disruption. Dams, primarily Kangaskoski, Lanasenkoski, and Ritakoski, fragmented the river's flow, creating insurmountable barriers for the salmon's vital migration to their upstream spawning grounds. The consequences extended far beyond the salmon. These dams disrupted the natural rhythms of the river, altering water levels and sediment transport and fragmenting habitats for countless species dependent on the river's connectivity. The tide began to shift in the late 1990s with the removal of smaller barriers on the Russian stretch of the river. The reappearance of salmon below the Kangaskoski Dam ignited a local movement to restore the Hitolanyoki's natural flow. After a decade of legal challenges, a groundbreaking decision was reached. The hydropower companies would sell their dams and plants. This historic move paved the way for Finland's most ambitious river restoration project to date. A multi-year effort was launched to remove all three dams and revitalize the rapids. Between 2017 and 2019, the three aging hydropower plants were acquired, setting the stage for their momentous dismantling. In September 2021, the first chapter of this transformation unfolded. Kangaskoski Dam. Its demolition sparked an immediate ecological response. A thrilling sight emerged within mere weeks. Salmon spawning nests dotted the newly opened river section. A year later, in July 2022, the largest dam, Lanasenkoski, was also removed. The final chapter in this restoration story centered on the Ritakoski Dam. This four-meter-high barrier, constructed in 1921, was the furthest upstream obstacle. In August 2023, a carefully planned, four-month process began to dismantle the dam and restore the surrounding rapids. With a cost of approximately 750,000 euros, the project was made possible through the generous support of public and private donors committed to ecological restoration. While the Ritakoski Dam's removal coincided with the autumn 2023 salmon spawning season, making immediate observations challenging, the results further downstream are immensely promising. Here at the Kangaskoski site, surveys in September 2023 revealed a remarkable density of over 200 salmonid fry per 10 by 10 meter area. But how exactly do you dismantle these titans of concrete and steel? Think of dam removal as a giant construction project in reverse, but with the added challenge of working in and around a powerful river. Engineers approach each dam as a unique puzzle. They study the structure's age, size, and the specific conditions of the surrounding landscape. Their goal isn't just to take down the concrete, but also to manage the massive volume of sediment that's been trapped behind it for years, maybe even decades. Let's picture one way they tackle this challenge. Imagine heavy machinery, like bulldozers, strategically removing sections of the dam wall. It's not about brute force, but controlled release. This allows water to escape in stages, giving the downstream ecosystem a chance to adapt. Meanwhile, the sediment that's been building up starts to move again, replenishing the riverbed and habitats further downstream. But the sediment itself is a wild card. Is it full of life-giving nutrients or potentially harmful pollutants? Understanding the trapped sediment is key to keeping the river healthy. That's why engineers take samples and carefully analyze what's behind the dam. The answers they find determine the best way to handle it. Do they release it gradually? or is a full-scale excavation necessary? Engineers have a toolkit of strategies to dismantle these concrete giants, each with its own advantages and trade-offs. 
Let's dive into some common methods. The notch and release approach. Think of this as releasing the pressure slowly. Engineers cut strategic notches into the dam, like steps in the concrete wall. Water drains out in a controlled and gradual way, mimicking a more natural flow. This gives the river time to adjust, and the trapped sediment begins to redistribute downstream, revitalizing habitats along the way. Patience is key here. It can take months, sometimes even a year, to fully drain the reservoir. Iconic projects like the Elwa and Glines Canyon Dam removals utilize this method to great ecological success. The Rapid Release Approach Need a faster solution? Picture a giant tunnel blasting through the base of the dam, creating a sudden, powerful torrent of water and sediment. It's the quickest and cheapest method, but also riskier. The surge can cause flooding and erosion downstream, potentially harming riverside ecosystems. It's only suitable in specific situations, perhaps when the reservoir is small or where it can drain quickly into a much larger river that can handle the extra volume. The dig and dewater approach. Sometimes the only way is a massive excavation project. First, engineers completely empty the reservoir, exposing a vast landscape of accumulated sediment. Then, heavy machinery moves in. Think excavators and trucks, carefully removing this material for safe disposal elsewhere. It's a slow, expensive process, often necessary when the sediment contains contaminants that could harm the downstream river if released. The retained sediment approach. What if moving all that sediment is just too costly or logistically challenging? In some cases, engineers can literally reroute the river around the dam. This involves constructing a new river channel that bypasses the barrier, leaving the sediment undisturbed. It's often used in remote locations where the costs of excavating and transporting vast amounts of material would be astronomical. Dam removal projects can be incredibly expensive. That's why careful planning is so important. Sometimes, targeting smaller or less complex dams gives you the biggest ecological rewards for the money spent. Want an example? Look at France's Selune River. Engineers recently removed two massive dams, reopening a 60-kilometer stretch that was blocked for a century. They even used the trapped sediment to rebuild riverbanks, helping nature bounce back with astonishing speed. Europe is making strides in restoring its rivers. In 2022, a record-breaking 325 dams and weirs were dismantled, revitalizing these crucial freshwater lifelines. Spain, Sweden, and France led the charge, with even newcomers like Latvia and Luxembourg getting involved. The majority of these barriers, a staggering 73%, were weirs, smaller structures that still have a big impact on river flow. These efforts are vital. Restoring free-flowing rivers helps reverse biodiversity loss, a top threat to our world. One of the most inspiring stories comes from war-torn Ukraine. Even amidst hardship, the 120-year-old Bayerivka Dam on the Pirkalaba River was removed, opening 27 kilometers of habitat for endangered species like the Danube salmon. The return of thriving fish populations could even create a biodiversity hotspot in the Carpathians. Many of these removals targeted obsolete or crumbling structures. In Norway, a century-old hydropower dam on the Tromsø River was carefully demolished after a tireless campaign by local anglers. Across Europe, projects like these are unlocking kilometers of rivers, like the 60 kilometers restored after the La roche quiba Dam removal in France or Finland's work on the Lana Senkowski Dam, part of their largest river restoration effort to date. In total, at least 832 kilometers of river pathways were reconnected in 2022. But how much does this transformation cost? While hydropower remains an important renewable energy source, many dams reach the end of their lifespan. Europe alone has about 150,000 obsolete dams. A recent study estimates that removing a 10-meter high dam averages $6.2 million. Are we seeing the start of a dam removal revolution? Let us know in the comments below. If you found this video informative, please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell.